Hello and welcome to vlog number 43. If you are not yet a subscriber and you do enjoy my content, please do consider clicking that subscribe button. And don't forget to ding the bell and select all so that whenever one of my videos goes live, YouTube will bother to tell you about it because if you don't and your notifications are turned off, you'll never know and you're just a potluck catching one of my awesome videos. And I'm sure you do agree, these are pretty awesome. Well, I enjoy making them anyway. This week I focus a lot on the Battle Games Middle Earth build which will be coming out next Tuesday but I have got a few other bits and pieces done, some varied stuff including working on the White Tower extension and also a couple of other bits and pieces that for life me from now I can't remember but I'm sure I've done more than just the White Tower but we'll find out because I'm about to edit the video. So enjoy, grab yourself a cup of tea, settle back and I'll see you again at the end. The next step for this build is to finish inside the uh, basement and I do think there is going to be more to this the more I look at this the more I want to make more and more layers and levels and expand the board into a whole playable area with maybe a town and a forest and all sorts of ideas make it into a full six by four or maybe even more and have it tessellating and tiling however that's for the future for now the last thing I'm going to do on this is going to be to finish off inside here now I've been spending a bit of time thinking about this which is why this has been delayed a little bit trying to work out how I'm going to transfer this shape so that I can actually make it in uh, air drying clay using the green stuff world rollers and um, what i really should have done this is a mistake so let me just explain this what i should have done is when i got this shape cut out before i stuck these down i should really have taken a template uh, transferred to drawn through onto a template and then i would be would have been able to very easily roll a pin that out get it to the right size right dimensions and, and what have you however too late now i can't pull all that up so what i found is if i offer up the board on which i roll my green stuff world rollers you can see that it is basically all of the width <laughs> there isn't very much space left uh, so if I can make this uh, for the floor the dimensions of this rolling pin then I'll be able to put that in cut it out where it's slightly off shape or slightly not not straight um, and then that will give me the opportunity to uh, to put the floor down any gaps or whatever on the sides will be covered because I will be doing the walls as well in a, uh, with, the green with the clay as well. So what I'm going to do now is roll over out and offer it up. So I will move the camera over and we will start doing the rolling. Right then, I have a little bit of the clay left over from before. However, I'm not going to make use of that because it's not going to be sufficient. So I've got a brand new pack of Daz that I'm just opening now. And I reckon that I'll probably use quite a lot of this for this initial floor. So what I'll do is uh, I will just tear that off like so and then roll it out and see how that how that covers. I also <laughs> have picked up the large roller from Green Stuff World to make this a little easier to do because the wooden one as good as it was wasn't all that good at avoiding becoming stuck. So I will get this rolled out like this and then when I've got it to a good size I will bring you back and we'll have a look at actually doing the rolling because that's going to be a bit difficult because the rolling pins are not big enough, <laughs> they're not wide enough to do this all in one go so I may need to become creative work out how I'm going to join together multiple of these when they're actually on the model. But first of all, I'll do this rolling out, so I'll get this done, and then I'll bring you back when I get to the next stage. So that's rolled out, didn't take very long. I'm going to make use of the flagstone roller, as you can see here. And you can see what I mean about it being not being wide enough really for what I'm trying to do. Um, this is not going to be anywhere near big enough in terms of width, but it is going to be long enough for me to uh, place down and work out what I'm missing. So we're going to pop some of the thin silicon rings on so that we can have a bit more of a, uh, a defined depth. I want this to be relatively thick. So we'll just slot them on the edges like so. And then we'll roll. So we'll start down here. There we are. Right, if I was trying to do something which was not a ruin, then that would be an issue here with these folds. However, that's actually going to work quite nicely when I get that in place. So I'm going to transfer this now over to the model and I'll bring you with, you, with me and we'll see what happens there. Right then, so here we are. 
and I brought over the tray as you can see and I've got myself a cutting implement as well to help. So first thing to do is going to be to offer this up and just see how well it sits in. And as you can see, that sits in very nicely in that length there. So what I'll do is I'm going to trim off these straggly bits to make it a straight edge. Because I don't need to worry too much about the width that way, as we've seen, because I'm going to need to do another cut, another press um, to fill those gaps in any, anyway. So the next thing to do now that we know that's going to fit in okay and uh, is pretty much where we want, to, we want it to sit is we're going to get some PVA glue and we're going to put the PVA glue and spread it around underneath because as I've said multiple times on my videos clay doesn't stick it has no adhesive properties it just dries so you need to put some wood glue down you don't need to be too tidy with it just put some wood glue down where you want this to sit in spread it around a bit and that then will hold it in place and the other thing to bear in mind is because we are going to be putting walls in they will sit down here and will also act as a little bit of a uh, as a pressure there we are so let's do that so that will act as a as a stop for it lifting so excuse my arms again as I reach over to drop that in place and let's bear in mind that Anything that we miss, we can refill with little bits of, of, of rollered. Because it is a ruin, we can even put rubble there to hide it. So we don't have to be too tidy on this. This is the biggest use of a green stuff old roller I've ever done. So there we are, that's that. So what I'm now going to do is roll some more out and fill in the rest of this space. And then there is actually just a little bit of a gap which you can't see on the camera, which is just at this end, which I will also fill in, maybe with some rubble actually. I might just do that. Um, and then I will bring you back when that's all done and show you what it looks like when it's completed because actually I need to stop now as I have other things to get on with. So I'll be doing that later on this evening. But there we are, very pleased with that. I'm very happy with how that's going to turn out. As I hoped, I've come back to this later and I've been able to put down the rest of the floor inside. Done it in patches, you can see that there's a line there that will even out with the uh, as it dries. What I'm probably going to do is put a doorway here and then a wall along here anyway and then maybe a wall along here and a doorway here. So you'll come out into a vestibule, you'll have a, a way through into there. That's possible what I'm going to do, but I don't need to do that just yet. What I'm now going to work on is I'm going to work on doing the walls for the outside, for, for, the, for the walls. <laughs> I'm going to work on doing the walls, which is going to be done with a stone roller. Same thing, so still the edge clay. I'm going to roll strips of that, stick it on the side, um, and then cut the top off when it's, uh, when it's stuck on. So it's going to be a bit of an easier job than putting this together. I also am thinking about putting in a trapdoor somewhere. So before these dry, I might put a trapdoor in this corner. As I've mentioned, I am thinking about how I can actually extend this and make this even bigger into a massive playable diorama, which might be quite exciting for me to do. So I think I might do that. Um, so yes, yeah, so if I do, then I will bring that, I'll bring you in and show you me placing that. Uh, but that's where we're at now. I'm very pleased with how it's looking at the moment. So I've put all of the air dry clay in. Uh, I've put it all the way around all of the walls with the brick pattern as you can see and also we've got the floor in as well. I have not yet put the trapdoor in. I think I'm going to leave that because I can always add that as an additional. I can carve out the clay if I need to. Uh, I'll leave that until I do the layer below if I'm going to do the layer below because at the moment this is looking okay uh, and I'm also going to leave whether I'm going to do a wall or not coming down here as I've said and across there. I'll leave that as well for another time. Just gonna leave that to dry uh, and make those decisions later. Uh, the next step will be to fill in these tiny little gaps back here with some grout or whatever um, and paint it up. So um, I'll get that done. Um, whether or not I'm gonna do the other walls, I will decide while I'm waiting for this to dry. So this just arrived. Well, hey, this is the Disk Station DS420J. Personal cloud storage starts here and literally haven't opened it. This is me opening it the first time. I'm very excited to get this and hopefully prevent data loss in the future. So let's have a quick look at what it contains. 
one cattle lead which won't be very much use because I've got to live in Bulgaria. However, I do have Bulgarian cattle leads. We have another box here which has some screws, network cable, power supply. That's about it. Cool. And then pretty well packed actually, nicely in trays, in padded trays, as you can see, that's quite cool. Let's just move that out of the way. This is the actual item, upside down, but that doesn't matter, I don't think. Oh, heavy enough. So, pull that off. And there we are. Please remove this film before power on. Bright red writing. So, there we are. We have my new storage that should hopefully prevent me from losing data so let's get that plugged in and start recovering my hard drive plugged it in turned it on worked straight out of the box apparently it's been chuntering away ever since a couple of hours now uh, i've managed to get it all installed i think and i've got it set up so i can monitor it well however what it's doing now is checking every sector on every disk which if you consider there's 16 terabytes in there that's going to take some time so i'm just letting it go i'm hoping that it'll be done probably by tomorrow morning or maybe the end of the working day tomorrow and then i can start to transfer and save files and uh, make use of it but i don't want to start copying things that it's finished this process just in case it does cause a problem and i'm not in now it's here i'm happy i'm not in a huge hurry i can wait so there we are, finally, finally it's here. And this may mean that I can start to feel a little more comfortable filming, shooting videos, getting clips and working on my hobby. The air dry clay is now dried. Uh, you can see, I, I decided to turn it around so you can see it from a different angle. You can see that there are some joins and a few bits where it's a little bit rough, but that doesn't matter, like I say, fortunately I'm doing a ruin. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take the, my favorite brick color, which is this. Um, I can't even tell you what colour it is, but uh, hopefully I'll be able to get hold of it again because I'm using it a lot. It is, um, I don't know, red. It's red. So we're going to use that and we're going to put that onto all of the walls. So I'll run the camera for a little bit and then I'll probably stop because it'll get a little bit tedious. But we're just going to basically paint the walls red. And I'm doing the walls red first because then I can do the uh, floor with my dry brushing and I will be able to cover up anywhere where I go over the edge. Now what you can see is I went a little bit heavy there, that's a mistake but I'll cover that up. What I actually want to be doing is getting a more of a result like I'm getting around here. Well, I'm not really having all that much paint on, it's not quite a dry brush but it does allow the bricks to maintain their the, the, the mortar between looks white basically and it looks worn. So just make sure that if you're trying to get this effect, you take most of the paint off before you start brushing. Um, it's kind of like a dry brush to be fair. It is quite similar to a dry brush, but it's just a little bit more paint on the brush than in a traditional dry brush, but it gives a great finish. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna carry on doing this around the entirety of this board, and I'll bring you back at the end when I have finished the paint and I'm about to start on the floor. So there we are. Let's get these bricks painted. There we are, that's done and is looking really nice. The next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the paint, like the dark gray paint as I call it, um, in my uh, cranberry yogurt pot. And I'm going to do basically the same technique, but on the floor. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a dry brush, not too light a dry brush, but the thing with this is you need to make sure that you're going in multiple directions. Um, and not just in one, otherwise it would look odd. Um, but I'm not gonna be too worried about this. What I'm trying to do here is just build up a, a color, and I might even go for a bigger brush than this when I finish filming, um, because that's gonna take me absolutely ages. But I'm just looking at building up a bit of a color because I'm actually gonna be doing some, pouring some um, grout and other things and putting some dirt and what have you. So this is not gonna be the color it'll end up being. Um, and the, uh, gr and the, the gaps between the tire of these slabs will end up with dirt and grime and what have you piling in the middle. So I'm just gonna crack on with this. Um, I'm still undecided about whether I'm going to put another wall up or not. 
Um, so put balls down where these gaps are, or I'll just leave it open. It's the sort of thing that I can decide at any time, and I may indeed just leave it like it is for now, um, just to uh, finish this build, um, and then I can think about how I want the uh, the rest of it to go over time. And I feel rushed then. Not that I feel particularly rushed now, but it'd be nice to finish this. I really want to. Uh, get a game with it. <laughs> That's what I'm working towards. So anyway, so I'll carry on with this. Just as I say, heavy overbrush, dry brush type technique to get these, bring out the tiles, bring out some of the textures, and then I'll be coming in with the grout to finish off this and also putting some rubble in and all sorts of stuff to make it quite interesting. And that might be what I do to cover more of the gaps than actually solid walls, but we shall see. I'll get this done and I'll bring you back to show what it looks like when I'm finished. I've not done as much on this as I expected to do this week because I've been busy with other things. I just haven't really had the time to do as much hobbying as I normally would like, but that's fine. I have, however, got to print out some different sizes of the gateways. Uh, I was looking at the picture, which I will flash up on screen now, and what you can see there is that the door is actually a lot smaller. If I set my little Gandalf here and I put him on this one, and you notice that I'm setting them a little bit below where the lintel is. I will now put the other picture on screen as well. And what you'll see is that the top of his hat here is where the trees are. However, in the picture, the top of his hat is about in that position. So what I did was, as I say, I printed these out in different sizes, nine centimeters, seven centimeters high, six, five and a half and five. And I think that six looks like it matches about correctly. So that's cool. So I can now practice because it's a lot smaller. This is the size that I did my test with the, uh, with the uh, luminous paint on and that was much, much bigger. That's 50% um, larger from nine centimeters down to six. So it's gonna be a little bit more detail, a little more fiddly, but also the actual where the glow is is not all the way through all of the um, columns and everything. It is just on the very edges. So it's gonna be a, a slightly more difficult painting task, but maybe slightly easier because I struggle to get it to be smooth. But if I'm just looking at doing a line, I can maybe stipple that on um, in maybe two or three applications and then get that done right. I have one month left to ship this and I haven't really done very much for the past 10 days. So I need to start focusing and next month I have another massive project on so it's going to be an interesting month I may have bitten off more than I can chew but whatever that's when I sometimes excel so what I'm going to do next for this project is cut some of these out as squares and do what I said I was going to do a week ago which is put them onto different media and work out how I'm going to best get this actually to look like rock because yeah white paper I'm going to struggle I think so anyway an interesting exercise and I'm pleased with what I've learned. I've been thinking for a, a while now, a couple of days, about putting the extra walls in the basement and I think I am going to do it. I wasn't but I've decided, having thought about it over and over again, that it will make a difference. So what I've done is I've just been measured uh, and I know roughly what my dimensions are going to be and I've just got some scrap, as you can see, two mil foam here. So the length of the wall that I want to do for the long central bit is 25 centimeters, 250 mil. And the height that I want to do is going to be five, um, five centimeters, 50 mil. Let me just get my right angle ruler. There we are, I didn't have it out to hand. So what we can do is I've measured my 25 and you can see that I can now offer that up here and measure my five up at 90 degrees, very useful tool. Of course, always presuming that this is actually straight. And then we can measure that again. And I've come up with a very good idea. This is actually going to be slightly easier than, um, uh, than, than I thought to do. So I've come up with an idea of how I'm actually going to get the brick effect on. I'm going to do a couple of different attempts, basically. So we're going to cut that one out. That's going to be one attempt. So I don't know which is going to work best, you see. And then we're going to do another five centimeters up because I'm going to make this wall twice and I'm going to do it in two different ways. And we're going to say which one actually works the best, which is always good fun. I like experimenting. So I will get these measured and cut. And then I'll bring you along in a second for when I start putting the brick effect on. I have two lengths that match. 
So I'm going to make this twice, as I've said. The first attempt is going to be on this one here, and it's going to be trying to see what happens with the, with the green stuff world roller when I just roll her straight directly on to the foam. It's just an experiment. It might be all right. It might not. If it is, then all I'll need to do is paint it. If it doesn't work, then all I've done is wasted a small strip of polystyrene. It's not brilliant, but it's not bad. I mean, it's definitely got the texture. I just don't know how long it's gonna stay for. Let's try and roll the other side. I don't think that I'm gonna be not doing my other idea anyway. Put it that way, I'll do both. Take some pressure. As I say, that definitely takes the texture, as you can see, but not very well. It's a very uh, hard foam, this. Hard to compress. So, I think the other idea is going to have to be done. So, I will get myself ready and bring you along for that. The other idea is air dry clay, but I'm going to try a method that I've not tried before uh, to see whether it works better. As you'll have seen previously, what I normally do is I roll a pin out on this, do the actual textured rollering, and then attempt to actually marry it up and then trim off one when it's, when it's in place. For what I'm doing now, mainly because it's just not possible to do that really, it's so tight, I'm actually uh, going to plan to roll a pin out and flatten this out, and then put this onto the board, and then roll in, do the textured rollering pin, put PVA on this, do the textured rollering pin, trim it while it's here, and then let it go off and then turn over and do the other side. That's my plan. I don't know whether it's going to work, but we're going to give it a go. So first of all, we will smooth and roll, roll and pin out this air dry clay. So we need to make sure that we get it to long enough, but it doesn't need to be so wide. So I'll get that done, I'll pop some music on, and you can watch. Okay, you can see that that's now going to fit, so what I'm going to do is peel this off, get my PVA, and smear that over the polystyrene. I have a brush just out of sight, which I can use to do the smearing, so I don't get my fingers all covered in glue. So we will put this, probably put a bit too much glue out there actually, you don't need that much glue. Otherwise, it just won't dry. There we have it. Take a bit off. Just use it for something else or let it dry. There we are. So there we have some PVA glue. What we'll now do is we'll set that on. Like so. And then, hopefully, this will work. If it doesn't, then you will have witnessed me being stupid, but probably won't be the last time and certainly won't be the first for regular viewers. Just make sure that it stays on because obviously it's a bit slidey, but it's certainly giving a nice strong texture not that you can see because of where my arm is, apologies. Right, so, if I lift that up, you can see that that is a good texture. So what I now need to do is trim that off and then let that to dry. And that's the, gonna be the issue with this, is that I'm not gonna be able now to really do anything with that until after it's dry, then it's gonna be turn it over and hope that I don't destroy or um, wreck the texture when I do turn it over. So we'll come along with this tool and take the, there we are. Possibly the wrong tool I've got, but it's working okay. Just to trim that off, let's get that out of the way. I think this 
air dry clay either needs to be used for something else immediately or it needs to be thrown away because it's now covered in PVA. Fortunately, I have another smaller wall to do, which I'm going to do in the same technique, I won't film because it's exactly the same. Um, so I may as well use this air dry clay to do the smaller wall and hopefully this technique will work so then I won't have two wasted walls. <laughs> but we shall see. Should dry, hopefully by this evening. And I'll bring you back when I can try the next, when I can try it again. But we'll leave that now to go off to set and see how that looks when it's done. I've just come upstairs um, after putting Rosie to sleep and uh, I found this, which is obvious. So there's an issue. The um, it's dry, which is good, so I can later on I'll roll and do apply the other side and it has worked very, very well. I am very pleased with how that's looking. However, it's very bowed. So what I'm going to do is just while I'm, um, I'm just about to edit the uh, vlog for this week, so this will probably be the, uh, the final video that I shoot before I shoot my uh, intro video. So I'm just going to pop these weights on it and leave it like that. Uh, while I'm shooting, I'll show you the other one that I did. Uh, this is a small section which is going to be for a doorway, so these, that will attach, that will butt up to that and there'll be a little archway through to a small room at the back. Um, and that's worked very well. It's not really, it's a little bit warped, but it's not half as bad as the other one. Um, so yeah, that's working really well. I'm going to finish those off and I'll bring you back when I'm doing it, uh, but you won't be able to see that now until next week anyway on the vlog. Uh, so yeah, good stuff. Pity about the bowing. So there you are, that's another week done. Uh, the project that I forgot about was the challenge to build where I'm building Drurin's door. That's good, that's going a bit slower than I hoped, so probably next week I'm going to have to focus on that a little bit more. And of course, this week I received my hard drive, which has meant that I've been able to recover quite a lot so far of what I thought I'd lost. I haven't yet got to the end of this process, I'm still working through the recovery and I've got a whole pile of files that are not in any order, not in any folder order and also there are some that I didn't lose which quite ironically is actually almost more frustrating and awkward than the ones that I've lost because now I need to try and find out which ones I've recovered and which ones are still saved on the hard drive and get them off before it completely dies. But anyway, the backup solution is working well and since the last video I shot about that I've learned a lot about it and I'm pleased with it. So I'll wrap that up there. I will be back again for the vlog next Sunday. Uh, this Tuesday is going to be the Battle Games of Middle Earth, which is an absolutely amazing video, another monster, uh, but a really cool build. So I hope you look forward to that. And then obviously I'll do my shorter video on Thursday. So that's the schedule for those of you who aren't aware. Thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I love the fact that people care enough to watch my videos and I love my regulars who always comment below. And if you don't comment, please do. I love to hear from you. I always do reply. And it's also always wonderful to know that there's real people watching these videos and it's not Russian bots or whatever. <laughs> and uh, yeah, please, uh, please do comment below. And I'll wrap up as I always do by saying, please stay safe, stay healthy and stay well.